All right. Well, uh, welcome everyone to the call. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join me. Uh, as always, and, and my goal and my desire on any of these types of calls is uh, is really to add value to me, add, add value to you guys. Uh, that's my goal is to add value to you. And I, I, know, um, I know you're busy. I know this time of year is a super busy time of year. So thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to this call. Uh, I, I truly don't take it for granted because if you really think about it and if you really look at it, what we're really doing is – is we're trading our life away, right? So any time that we're doing anything, whether that's at work or at home playing with the kids or exercising or if we're just sitting on the couch watching TV, whatever activity we are doing in that moment, we're really trading our life away for that activity because time is something that we'll never be able to get back. So with you guys taking the time out of your day to be on this call or if you're listening to the recording, I just want to say, uh, I truly desire to make this a worthy trade. And, and before we get started, I, I just want to say thank you for allowing me uh, to come alongside of you on your journey. And I, I truly am honored to be a part of that journey. Um, so let, let's let's get started on the call. I, I just I, I love, love, love this lesson. I had a blast putting it together. And I, it really just um, thinking and bathing in this thought idea of how we create what we want in our lives. And I think I think that has to be the very first understanding of goal setting. And, and really, this, this lesson is a lesson on goal setting. And I'll use that language throughout this call. But I really want to affirm the understanding that what we call goal setting and goal achieving is really a very natural process of, of uh, creation and, and manifestation. It's really interesting. We, we listen to a call like this and um, maybe go to seminars like the one I'm hosting in January or we take classes or courses or read books on goal setting. And, and it, it's probably the number one topic in all of personal growth and development. Yet it, it's a very natural process. It's how we create and, and manifest in our lives. And it, that's a very important distinction to make because I know for me, m- many times in my life, I, uh, you know, I, I looked at myself as a failure when it came to being a goal achiever. I, I had failed so many times in achieving goals. And, and when I said I failed, what I really mean is I simply quit trying, right? I, I don't ever uh, honestly remember making the conscious decision to quit trying. I can remember making the decision to not do whatever it is uh, or whatever it was that I was supposed to do that day to achieve my goal. But I never looked at that singular decision as me saying no uh, to my dream and to me quitting on my goal. I I still wanted my goal, but uh, it it, it always seemed to lead that sooner or later I quit on my goal, right? I, I I would just stop trying altogether. And you know, I never really understood the consequences of those singular decisions, those, those daily little decisions not to do what I know I could do and what I should do. And, and if I would do it, then it would bring me closer to where I wanted to be. But what if I had it all wrong? What, what if I was looking at this goal-setting thing all wrong? What if I really was not failing when I quit? What if quitting – from from time to time it was actually a necessary part of this goal achievement process. What if what if that time space that that I labeled as quitting was actually a natural and necessary part of the process in this goal achievement? A, a a time space in the creative process, right? For for self evaluation and really self contemplation, a necessary expression of one of God's laws of creation and. And there are seven of them, and, and the one we're talking about is this law of rhythm, and we'll talk more about that in the seminar and the personal growth program that I've created to follow. But, but what if this time space that I defined as quitting, I was to use that as a time in the creative process to strengthen my inner image, even, even while doing nothing, right? Even when, when I wasn't exercising when I should, when I, when I wasn't studying or making those calls, uh, whatever, if I still held the image, that image would still keep me in the goal achievement or the creative process. It's, it's not just the physical activity and the doing. And that, that's what I get caught up in is this, this doing and doing and doing, right? But what if I change my perception of, of this perception of goal achieving altogether? What if I change that and 
began to see it as a creative process and in a process of uh, of manifesting things in my life of of attracting those things and into my life now that <laughs> that's something I could really have some more confidence in that that I knew I'd been successful out of my life for and for some reason when I looked at this process as creating things right as manifest thing I I had less self judgment when I, when I would meet with this temporary failure or this temporary defeat. So goal setting and, and goal achieving are, are really skills that, that have to be learned. Um, they require a learning model, just like all things do. Just like if you think about um, or, or riding a bike when you're a kid and you're trying to learn how to ride that bike. It's just like that. But when I think about creating and manifesting that, you know, that's, that's a natural process for us. It's really natural. We were born creators. We, we came pre-programmed to create. We arrived on the scene, right? <laughs> we arrived on the scene with a learning model of creating already programmed within us. That, in fact, we were made in the image of the creator, capital T, capital C, the creator. And I tell you, that, that was a huge shift in awareness. I mean, what a great way to begin this process, starting with the belief that I am already a creator. I have nothing new to learn, nothing to learn. Rather, I only need to become fully aware of this power that, it, that is already possessed, right? See, if you think back to riding a bike, the, the learning model to riding a bicycle, there's a lot of falling down, right? <laughs> and you think about it, you were born – with the potential to ride the bike, but you had to learn the skill. And, and the difference is when you, when you were learning to ride a bike, you hadn't really um, fully developed this part of you, that, that ego judgment center, right, this, this part of your self-image that, that seems to keep track of uh, uh, every failure and every mistake, right, that, that you've ever made. <laughs> when you were a kid and when you're, you were young, you could suspend that self-judgment and you could stay connected to your desire. But as we grow older and as, as uh, our awareness and perception and self-image change, uh, we had that, right? We get that. And if you pay attention to the the language of a child or the linguistics of a child, you'll hear and see it, right? When they fall off the bike, they say, this stupid bike, it won't, this, this, this doggone bike, it won't. I can remember when I was a kid and playing video games, you know, it was always the video game's fault. It was always the remote control fault. <laughs> but you, you compare, to, compare that to us as adult learners, and our language usually is, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did. I'm so dumb. I'm so stupid, right? So there are two thoughts here. First, we make the shift from looking at goal setting and achieving as something we cannot do or you cannot do or, or that you're a failure at doing. And you begin to see that goal setting and achieving are actually, it's really a natural process of, of, of creation and creating. Uh, and you were born pre-programmed as a creator. And second, is, is when you make the shift in your perception, what happens is you begin to detach from the outcome. You, you separate your self-value from your results. You are not your results. And I tell you, not, not only will you feel a thousand percent more confident and a thousand times happier and a thousand times free, you'll create and manifest a thousand times faster. And, and the reason we define our purpose, our vision and goals is so that we can consciously direct this creative process. So your purpose, vision, and goals, they are the roadmap that this creative power will follow, right? So, so understanding, awareness, and self-evaluation, those are the tools that you'll use to strengthen your ability to live from this purpose and, and vision and goals. And, and I'll tell you, that, that is how and, and that is why um, I, I've designed this particular call and, and the seminar in January. And for those of you that, that have already signed up for the seminar, I, I want to say I really appreciate your trust. And, and for any of you that are still interested and would like to learn more about the seminar, I'll, I'll share more about that at the end of this call and how you can reserve your ticket. Um, but, but I've designed this to help you gain understanding, awareness, and, and to guide you through a process of this gentle, gentle 
Okay, self evaluation. So let's start with purpose. And and your purpose, it's um, it's the filter through which you will direct this creative process. It, it's the why you do what you do, right? So so you can create what you feel is your highest calling and your highest good. And I think. I think many people get hung up on this. This is where people get tripped up. And, and it's not uncommon, really, to feel that you don't know what your life's purpose is. I, I don't think that's uncommon at all. Just remember, this is a skill to be developed. It's like riding the bike. And, and when you first learn to ride the bike, you got on the bike, and you just guessed how it worked for you, right? You, you, you knew you weren't going to get it right the first time, but you can always ask someone for help and you can learn from the last fall. You just get back up and you fall again, get back up and fall again. You would learn from those falls. So if you don't know what your life's purpose is right now, it's okay. It's okay. Most people, most people don't. So just guess. Take a guess. Take a stab at it. Wherever you're at in your life right now, take a guess. And, and remember, this is the filter. This is the filter through which you'll make most of your life decisions through, right? So let me give you an example. And this, this is, I, I'm still in process of this as well. I'm still going, um, working on this and, and in process too. And this is part of mine. But my, my purpose really is, is to wake people up to their potential, to open their eyes to the gifts and the talents and abilities that they've been freely given and, to, and, and really move from this uh, reacting to life and, and really to allow life and happen to uh, they they allow life to happen to them and really move into intentional living and allowing life to happen through them and I, I just want to guide people to this full awareness of their potential and the oneness with their creator so that's part of my process and it and it took me a while to figure that out and and like I said I am still in process with that and I, I can tell you though before knowing or even taking the time to think about my purpose, I was a, a very easy suspect to SOS, that shiny object syndrome, right? <laughs> and when an opportunity would present itself and it sounded good, then I was all in, right? Let's let's go. I, I jump on board. But I can tell you now that as I'm gaining a better understanding of what my purpose is, I, I use that as the filter to determine if I take action on the opportunity or not. If there's a business opportunity that um, that I'm presented with, that, uh, but it's not in harmony with my purpose, uh, you know, they may be great opportunities, but if they're not in harmony, I have to take a pass. I, I let go of that. I don't, I don't take action on it. So your purpose really, your purpose is really like the sun. Everything revolves around it. And, and from your purpose, you begin to create your vision. And I, I can say this. I found this to be the most powerful, productive activity in the creative process, I promise you. And to me, the time you spend writing your vision, it, it gives you the biggest bang for your time book, I promise you. And, and when I work with individuals one-on-one, -on -one, we spend a good deal of time on developing this because I believe so much in its power. So your, your vision statement really is a, it's a detailed description of you living in the full achievement and presence of your purpose in the present tense. That's the key, in the present tense, not past tense, but in the present tense. So your vision will include those things that, that uh, you, you are aware of for you to fulfill your purpose and the action steps as, as well as the future achievements you want to have in your goals. Your goals are the, the, the steps there. And your vision statement, it's kind of like a, it's more of a connector between your purpose and your goals. And it, it's a, a living and, and breathing document, it's going to change. And that's why I call it a living and breathing document because it is going to change as your awareness expands and your understanding expands, your, your belief in your self-image changes. And so, so your vision statement will change as well. I, I really believe, out of all three of those, I, I believe it's more important to spend time on your vision than with your goals or even with your purpose. You'll find that, that it's ultimately your vision that will drive your goals, and, and it's your vision that will sharpen the clarity on your purpose. So uh, the vision really, the vision is really a, a perfect place to start if you're lacking clarity on your purpose. And you may have a wandering idea of, of what your purpose is, so you write that out to the best of your awareness, and then you go right to work on your vision, writing what, uh, what you want your life to be like. 
what do you want it to feel and look like? What kind of what kind of friends do you want to have? What type of relationships uh, do you want? What what type of home do you want? What does that look like? What what type of clients do you want? What type of habits do you want? Every aspect of your life, you're you're going through that. And I, I tell you, this is not a a one time ride. You will write it, and then you'll go back through it and edit it and make it clear, and, and you'll change future tense and past tense to, to present present tense, right? You, you, it's, it's present tense. So the writing of your vision, it, it really should be fun, and, and it should be really something that is exciting to do. I mean, the, the feeling of hopeful expectation should just – it should just fill you to the brim, right? The vision statement, it, it, it will ultimately it, – it's going to be the highest expression of your awareness at that time for your life's highest good and purpose. So really, you think about, in other words, your your vision is your highest thoughts and your highest ideas of how you would live out this purpose. Let's say, um, give me an example here. Let's say say that your purpose is something like um, uh, uh, to feed starving children. Let's just say that that's a piece of your purpose. And let's say uh, the picture, the vision you have that, that you now lead an organization and that, that you partner with other organizations uh, around the globe to bring relief. And, and, and you guys help raise money and that brings food and other supplies to maybe war-torn areas of the world. So, so your vision statement, it really begins to unfold for you as you begin to imagine how you would live your purpose. So, it, well, if, if my purpose is to feed starving children, you start to ask yourself, well, what are some of the ways that I could do that? And, and anything, here's the key, anything that comes into your awareness, you begin to write it down. Uh, it, it's really important that when you write it down, you don't question whether you can or you can't, whether you are, you're sourced or not. That, it's so important. You, you just put it down, right? Whatever comes into your awareness, you write the thing down. <laughs> and and say, say, is that in harmony with my purpose? So the test isn't whether, whether you know how uh, to do it. The test is, is it in harmony with my purpose? And, and, and the really cool thing is, is that, that as you begin to work with your vision and from your vision statement, you'll begin to identify goals. You'll see it, it will help you get crystal clear. You'll start to see short-term goals, and then, then you'll be able to see long-term goals right there within that vision. And I tell you, though, the biggest challenge in creating the vision and goals in your, it, it, it's going to be your own inner, it, that inner voice, right? I, I call this voice Norm. And I tell you, old Norm, that old guy, he has a need to know how you're going to achieve these goals. It'll, he'll say something like, well, how are you going to do that? How, how are you going to do that? How, how are you going to do that? You've never done that before. How are you going to do that? Look, look seriously, this is a, I promise you, this is a very real part of your reasoning mind. This part of your mind, it has a need to know how, and it gets stuck. It really does get stuck in the thinking of how. How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? And, and if this part of your reasoning mind isn't satisfied with the answer you give it, it begins to reject the idea, and, and it begins the reason why you can't do it. It, it will go into the filing cabinet of your mind, and it'll access all your past results, those those old files in your in your memory bank, right? And it begins to run through those programs and starts digging through the files and begins to bring them forward. All those past failures and those past mistakes, they'll pull out and it says, oh, yeah, yeah, here's one. Remember when you said you were going to do this and it didn't get done? Remember this? Remember that? Remember this? Remember that? So, to prevent this and, and to stay in the land of possibility, I, this is what I've used. I've used this to answer uh, how, that question how, right? When, when that old voice, Norm, starts asking me, well, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? And, and look, right now, it, it's not the time. It, it, at this time, at this point, it's not about how. You almost have to you almost have to muscle your way through this voice at that point because at this point it has nothing to do with how. The how will be broken down once we get to the goals. Vision is just where you capture your highest conscious awareness. So don't allow this voice and this part of you to derail you from your vision. The how-tos, 
they're going to come from your vision and the how to's and the where and, and, and where are you going to get the money? What about the resources? How are you going to find the time? All of that, all those, all these hows and stuff, that's all goals. How are you going to get the money? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to have a goal to get the money. See, again, if your vision is to work with organizations already in a third world country feeding children, this part of you may ask, well, where are you going to get the money to fly out there? How are you going to get the time off? Well, I don't know. I, I'm going to have a goal to get the money. I'm going to have a goal to make the time. See, I'll accomplish the how when I get to the goals. But right now, I'm in vision. I, I'm going to focus on the vision. So really stay in the land of possibilities. And, and don't get derailed by that kind of thinking. From your vision, you, you're going to get your goals. Your goals are going to come from that vision, and sometimes directly from your vision, and sometimes as a way for you to live into your vision. And the purpose of the goal it really is to benchmark your progress and to cause you to grow into the person who is living your purpose and vision. The pur- it, it, it's to cause you to grow into that purpose. Some of your goals, they may be very short term. I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's only a day, sometimes longer, maybe a week or a month or, or a couple of years, but I, I would suggest, this is a suggestion, and, and you can take it as that, but I would suggest if, if you've struggled with achieving goals in the past, let's just say that, that goal setting and goal achieving are, are muscles, right? And if you haven't worked out in a while, <laughs> then, then maybe you should set some very short-term goals. Maybe set some day goals. This, this will allow you to gain confidence in your ability to keep your word and commitment to yourself, right, and building on top of each win. So each small win will build on the last and, and will begin to create that winning learning model in your mind. And, and that's really where we want to get to. We want to understand the compounding effect of consistency. That, that purpose is why we do what we do. It directs all of our thinking. It is the filter through which we make all of life's decisions. It, it's that important. You know, You'll see someone who doesn't really have a clear purpose for their life, and, and, and they're wishy-washy, right? They're the ones that I, I'm not sure. They have, to, they have to think about things. Well, I'm not really sure. I'm not exactly sure, right? They, they say those kind of things. See, when you have a clear purpose, and that purpose is the filter through which you make decisions, you'll make decisions quickly because you'll say, you'll say it's a match, or it's not a match. It's a match. It's not a match. You'll know right away. You'll know right away. So from, from there, you'll write out what, what are some of the things that I can do, you know, um, you know, kind of just a whiteboard where you're visioning. It. It's just letting the ideas flow. And, you know, when you're in a vision, a, a lot of the ideas that come to you, they won't make sense, and they won't fit in your current world. So be on guard for this, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? And from there, your goals – uh, your goals will come from your vision. And I love what Jim Rohn says about goals. He says, the ultimate purpose of the goal is not to achieve the goal. It is to become the person who can achieve the goal. I, I, oh, I love that. So, so I hope this time has truly added value to you. I hope you'll spend some time thinking about your vision and your goals to, to really clarify your purpose. Um, one thing that, that I truly believe in one of my biggest beliefs is that God has created every single one of us with unique gifts, talents, and abilities, and that, and that those are unique to us, and we are to use those gifts to serve. And as I said earlier in the call, I'll, I'll be hosting a live seminar uh, on goal setting called 2019, Your Best Year Yet. It's going to be on January the 8th in downtown Tupelo, and uh, a couple of ways that you can attend, you can attend live. Or you can do a live stream, and if you have a group of people and maybe you prefer to me to come in and do a private seminar with just you and your team, then uh, I'd be happy to do that as well. But one thing I know for sure, um, or the Lord willing, I know for sure, is that 2019 is going to come and go. And and for a lot of people, that's exactly what will happen. 2019 will just come and go, and it'll be a whole lot like 2018, which looked a whole lot like 2017. So where will you be at at the end of 2019? And again, Lord willing, you're going to end up somewhere. Will you be there by default or by design? Really take some time to 
to, to think into where it is and what it is that you truly want. Uh, on, if you downloaded your workbook, I gave you some activities for you to do. I, truly take some time to think through those questions. Do those activities that I gave you in the workbook. I, I hope you'll join me on January the 8th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, you can go to uh, www.eventbrite.com and you can look up 2019, your best year yet in Tupelo, Mississippi, or you can even email me at Corey at CoreyLeeLeadership.com. That's C-O-R-Y at CoreyLeeLeadership.com to find out more and, and reserve your ticket. And again, I, I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to be on this call. Um, I truly hope that it has been a worthy trade. Uh, I, I do. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great day and God bless. Thank you guys.